you know, Ick Smithy's name quite a bit as one of the front runners, and he was the change for Immortals, which took them from being a seventh place team and missing playoffs last split to now adding Song and Ick Smithy to being in this position here in sole possession of first. Well, 11 and 3 here for Immortals at the start of a week out. We'll see if they can maintain that record. Liquid still fighting for some of those safety spots, but maybe, just maybe, with their fingers crossed tightly, there is some hope towards playoffs. We'll see what happens here in the draft, though. LeBlanc and Thresh fanned by Liquid, followed by Zach and Nah. Actually, for Immortals, so already a lot of mix-ups. And again, these teams saw a lot of surprises, it felt like, in the last week. But teams have had extra time to adjust to the patch now. And we'll see exactly what's settled. Because for me, this is one of the most fun patches I've ever had the privilege yeah. of casting on, because it is so diverse. Yeah, there's so many different champions that can be played. And that's the thing, is right now, blue, red side, it's kind of a, a fiasco. Nobody knows exactly what to ban. We saw Zach and Maokai make it through in the last series. We're seeing Maokai make it through here with Nar banned away. I feel like you pick Maokai here, first pick is Team Liquid, and you flex it to either Darrock or Lorlo, and that's kind of the power of that Maokai first pick is they don't know exactly where it's going. If they pick some type of aggressive top laner, you don't have to play Maokai into that if you don't want to. Yep, and even if they do, sometimes it just doesn't matter. Maokai is mm -hmm. such a strong pick on the current patch. Caitlyn and Elise did join those last bands for Liquid and Immortals respectively, but Maka is the expected first pick and the lock in there for TL. So we'll see what Immortals want to do again. This has been a team that pretty much all split long has kind of done their own thing. They're actually going to pick Tristana first here. So maybe recognizing that some tank busting will be required. Cody's going to take that AD for himself. Yeah, his second Tristana game so far of the split, mostly he's been favoring the utility like Varus and Jin, as well as a little bit of the Caitlyn, which has been banned away here. And the Jarvan, also a flex pick. I feel like it's also a strong champion to pick up right here because it can go to both the top or the jungle, and we have seen it played by both players. Yeah, it's actually Flame's second most played champion, but it's kind of funny that x Smithy has just taken it every single game so far. So again, with Maokai potentially up there, Flame might have a, a different pick in mind, but certainly lots of flexibility there for IMT. And now Liquid kind of have to answer these next few questions. Kalista will be one of their lock-ins here. Could maybe take away a strong support. We've seen a lot of teams actually target Ole very heavily in pick and bang, which is, I think, kind of a matter of pride for a lot of supports. It's not every day you eat four to six pans in any given champ like, but there's the Gragas. So that's been Dardock's most played. That's the jungle pick I expect here. And it looks like they're actually, that's something where if Immortals were able to get Flame on the Jarvan, Xmithy's most played by a good margin here is the Gragas, almost twice as many plays as his next highest, but that's gonna leave Immortals to know exactly where these lanes are gonna go. And they're gonna pick the Shen into the Maokai top. Shen historically beats the tanks in the top lane, and now he has some pressure, and as well as somebody to, you know, who's a late game carry in the Tristana, to ulti, and he has a way if they want to be aggressive, to ulti in on the Jarvan on top. Yeah, it's kind of funny to think that a champion that felt almost unplayable in so many ways in the top lane versus those bruises kind of feels right back at home. Now that there's nothing but tanks there on the top side. Orianna been there for Immortals, so gonna take that away from Golden Blue was one of the keys to Liquid's overall success was how they're able to play with very straightforward team fight composition to just kind of do things the easy way. Oriana pick that can enable that sort of thing. And Golden Blue, despite not having the best results in the LCS so far, certainly showed enough individual skill to be like, yeah, this is a stable champion, I can definitely play it. Yeah, another great stable champion for Golden Blue that's not exactly in the new tank meta is the Galio mid. Uh, he's actually I believe two and zero on it, and his, he hasn't died on it either, so his KDA, I believe, is still undefined. Can't divide, divide by zero. Just double checking it really quickly. But yeah, I mean, yeah. his gallery games have earned him player of the game awards, even in a time where Liquid was struggling overall. So, certainly been a good pick for him. His Talia will get banned by Immortals also, so two mid lane bans actually aimed there at Golden Blue. Blitzcrank joins the crew, though, as the other hook champion banned away. Again, teams do like to target Ole and pick ban quite a lot, so. We'll take away that aggressive option, and with one more to go, could even go for another support here, or change it up as we move into phase two of picks. Liquid actually are going to go for that bug, which is the pick I would expect Ole to fall down to. So going to be pushed four champions down at this point. Yeah, but I feel like Ole's champion pool is so large. Alistar is something that's kind of come into the meta lately. Uh, Morgana is one that he always has. If you want to dominate the lane, you can go for the Karma. And oh, is this? Cassiopeia is still on the table, though. I wouldn't actually expect that, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually going to save the counter pick for the last there in mid lane. Looks like Lulu is the lock-in, so something to just help that Trist out. Of course, Lulu Jarvan, also lots to work for there as well. Our mortals, they're a team that loves to pick fights, and they're very good at doing it. So yeah. lots of tools for them here. And the, the Lulu is going to help out with Cody Sun, who's been an incredibly consistent player for them. Even when I check their losses, his score lines actually still look 
quite good. He actually has the highest KDA on the team at 4.9. Hobelter's right behind him at 4.7. And Cody Sun has a very high kill participation as well. He actually has the highest KP on the team. So he's participating in the fights. He is not dying. And Cody Sun is just being that backliner. But even on the champions that had that mid range, and now they're setting up for success with a protect Cody comp. Yep, that's actually a Zyra there for Liquid. And last pick, maybe something aggressive. It will be Lucian for Golden Glue. Kind of shoring up the two marksmen with two tanks. We've seen a lot of this style of comp, especially with the likes of a disengaged ultimate. We've seen way more Janna than we might have expected. Zara is kind of the aggressive version of that in some ways, yeah. but we'll see if that does maybe cause problems in the lane. We do know Piglet and Matt like to play aggressive, but it costs them in the last engagement between these two teams. Last pick is Cassio, though, to round it out for Pobelta. So taking the pretty straightforward pick there, Goddard will have the option, but decided he didn't want it. Yeah, and it was kind of interesting because you could pick the Cassiopeia. The Orianna was already banned away, but having the counter pick for Poe Belter, they decided to go for a very aggressive blind pick. And this composition from Team Liquid, very physical damage heavy, save for Matt, and then there's a little bit of percent HP magic damage there from Dardock and a little bit from Lorlo, but it's mainly that physical damage, which you know Flame is going to start stacking, and so is Ixmithy, as well as the range disparity here is kind of big. Cassiopeia keeps Lucian a little bit at arm's reach in that later part of the game, and then you have a tank line of the Shen and the Jarvan. It's going to be very difficult for TL, if this game goes long, to reach the Tristana, to reach the uh, Cassiopeia, to kill them through these shields. Right now, Immortals are just looking to kind of double down on what's been working for them in terms of strengths, whereas TL, it looks like they're trying to crush the early game here and win bottom lane, as well as try to have a winning mid lane. Yeah, it's kind of nice to see Immortals again, falling back to what we expect for them. For me, in the mid lane, I do like that Pobelt is on more of a carry. We've seen them on a lot of more enabling style champions, Orianna, Talia, those sorts of things, but he's also had a ton of corky games recently as well, so it's not like Immortals are unwilling to put him on some sort of carry. And again, if tanks are going to be everywhere, if your entire top side is almost always consisting of two tanks minimum, then just get some solid carries in there. I think Immortals are showing a lot of what we'd expect in this sort of meta. If tanks are good, get the tank busting carries and get some tanks for yourself. And it's kind of funny that we're going all the way back from playmaking supports, kind of back to some of the defensive supports as well. Yeah, now we're getting into the game right now. Immortals versus TL. And this is a matchup that coming in, a lot of people were like, oh, you know, it's, you know, top team versus a team that's outside of playoffs right now. But TL with the swap to Dardock, this is something that I feel like you can't miss out on watching. I don't think so. I mean, if nothing else, even though Teal on paper are not favored against the current number one team in the NALCS, Dardock is enough of a wild card in so many ways that it'll be fun to see what happens here. Back on Liquid in less than a split. Yeah. yeah, their new old jungler, you know, coming back to him. But I feel like he still has a lot of this synergy intact, right? He was best buds with Lorlo. There was that bromance. And then he always ganked for Piglet and Matt back in the Challenger days with TLA, back when it was, I believe it was Young Bin back on AD Carry then. Uh, but there was a stint where Piglet went to TLA instead of TL. Kind of fun to see what happens here. Lola going to set up some early saplings. We've seen a lot of blue side power from Malkai for this exact reason, but Dardock poking in. Trying to spawn Smith, he's gonna get a barrel down there, but it's Smith uh, goes up. Fobelter's wrapping around him right now. Dardock gonna warp, but Fobelter's gonna get some damage down here. Corrupting pot start as well for the Cassio, so a good bit of damage done, but Dardock won't be too unhealthy. Yeah, he does use a potion. Gragas does have a very healthy clear in general, and he's gonna get a sapling, so the potion wouldn't mean as much as it normally does for other junglers. Like, if you get a potion out of Jarvan early, it can be pretty big for him, but with the Gragas and the way that his jungle's been set up, I don't expect it to really put him too far off his route. Yeah, it's kind of funny to think that only last week, Dardock matched up against Dick Smithy in against the same jungle. Dick Smithy has played a lot of Jarvan recently. Looks like Dardock is off his Rengar kick for the time being. Yeah, that's what that's what Dardock was doing. He wanted another go at Dick Smithy, right? It's like that Rengar game, that wasn't exactly what I wanted. And he did have a good start to that Rengar game, but then he started invading. He actually got picked off by Dick Smithy, and Mike Young was on that cast and couldn't stop talking about how Dick Smithy just reading Dardock there was the game-changing play. So Dardock definitely wants to have another go at Xmithy because he's kind of been a bit of his kryptonite so far this split. So it feels like it here. It's Golden Glue getting aggressive there onto Pobelta, but Pobelta can hit level two, and that's Cassiopeia for you. No, that was so Don't well even stop. That was so well played. It's going to be a solo kill. Golden Glue can't use those flashes. Doesn't have a heal, but now has to burn the mana. He's going to stay in the mana. Is low. Pobelta flashes, then gets the auto down, and almost dies to a tight shot bot lane, though. Still active. Spears, Spears, Spears. Around Piglet. Does get first blood. He is going to go down. Jarvan just a little late to try and save that first blood as Cody leaps in onto map for the Ignite Town onto the level one Trist. 
going to force Cody away. Yeah, Matt hit level two there, and it was just like, okay, maybe he'll be able to actually get something done. But Piglet being aggressive, we were talking about how they were smashing this bottom lane last time. If Smithy doesn't even get to level three there. He only does a level two route, comes down, and they start fighting, and he immediately augments his plan and starts moving towards it. But right here, Matt's actually got inside track. That's Thunderlord's job, and though, Dardoch Cody, though. a massive amount of damage. Cody gonna leave 41. Stardock damage is dead. dead. Explosion shot should be enough to take him down. And Smithy gets double buffs out of the deal. Yeah, guess you don't need to do your own blue if you get the enemy jungle's blue. But Ix Smithy, that was just, he's changing what he's doing based on exactly what his team needs at that moment. If he starts just going with, hey, I'm just gonna complete my blue buff and keep going, that's fine. He moves here before the play even starts. That is such a damn good read by Ix Smithy. He says they're gonna start being aggressive, and he reads Piglet here so hard that Piglet gets first blood, but he gives a kill back and then he sticks around. That could hurt your jungle, but Dardoch doesn't react in time, finishes his own red buff first, and then goes into the jungle. And Smithy's already hit level three off of the residual experience, off of the nearby camps going down, or the creeps in the lane. And they get that kill back. This is just showing the flexibility of the type of jungler that Ix Smithy actually is. I think in general, I've been so impressed with Ix Smithy's gank sense. It almost always seems to be operating. Yeah, and that's what was ridiculous about that. Like, when I saw that play and I didn't see the setup to it, I thought Ix Smithy was reacting to the fact that the play started and Piglet started getting spears in. But no, he read that that was going to happen and preyed off of the position of the lane and player tendency and took the blast cone in a position where Piglet started to go aggressive, and then he had to commit to going aggressive there and all in, or else he just dies for nothing. The yeah, Wilson now has blue buff as well, so Golden Glue is in Ugh. a world of hurt already. That's CS stacking up, winning on CS there for the Casio, and even top lane going in, Flame. Happy to fight Lolo just a bit here. Dada kind of forced, but he's got no flash. Kind of tricky to get in there as the Gragas. Yeah, and also Ix Smithy there giving the blue buff over to uh, Pobelter will put him at level three compared to level four in the jungle. So Dardoch is caring about that experience for himself mostly. Goodbye, but like, yeah, he's he's still got a flash. I mean, he's gonna get chased out. Uh, Storm Raiders. Uh, looking for it. All right. Just Pretty barely high. missed out on dying. My calculations were slightly off. Yeah. But he's still like... got the flash out of him. A Pobelter did not continue the chase there with the Storm Raider surge. That's a classic cast of curse, really. <laughs> He's dead. Oh, he's alive. Ah, uh, as Dardoch takes this, got to crumble away. That, that takes me back. There's like some montage of, uh, what was it? I think it was D-Man, just uh, Joe Miller calling people dead. They're not dead! Ah! It happens to everybody. It certainly does. Well, Golden Glue stays alive, but just barely as the models continue to leverage their almost 1,000 gold lead mm -hmm. at the very early stage. The Teal will be happy to have gotten first blood, but last few things have not gone their way. We'll see if the junglers keep playing as aggressive as they have been. Yeah, and I feel like the big part here is this mid lane with Pobelter, you pick the Lucian on Golden Blue side to be aggressive, to be up in their face. And Pobelter played it incredibly well if we went back and watched that level one to level two, where he auto attacks the creep, finishes it off to hit level two, and immediately levels up Q, hits Q on the Lucian, and chases Golden Blue down the lane. And that's just a small thing of Golden Glue not knowing exactly how much experience Pobelter needed to get to level two himself after Golden Glue had hit two and went aggressive. And that's just showing Pobelter knows how to punish people in lane. And that's why it's a CS lead on this counter pick that he got, which is not 100% of like a very hard counter. Right? No, I think in general, a lane counter, yeah. Happy to farm up. Golden Blue, though, every time he gets poisoned, just really can't walk towards Pobelta. So, so far, so good. 10 CS and counting there in the mid lane. Zick Smithy might be up for another, another visit. Sneak around that does. hatch of vision. And I don't think he got spotted. Gonna go all the way around. Not seen yet, but Golden Goo kind of hugging that turret. Ix Smithy instead gonna maybe try and find Dardoch. And you can see what happens is Pobelter starts playing to the left side slightly. Flame had lane priority because he pushed Maokai all the way to his turret. And now they go invade. And you, they also had uh, Tracker's Knife Wards to go ahead and lay down. So full coverage of this top side jungle. Dardoch will walk in it now. And he has no other jungle to clear, right? His wolves are gone, his drop is gone. Everything's gone on this side. So now you can read Dardoch and say, what's he going to do for the next minute? He's going to try to look for a gank, but you see him coming. Dx Smithy actually already with that Cinder burning away. So very efficient jungle clear to be ahead of Dardoch in that respect until he goes back and spends his money. Back in the bottom side, though, although never mind, as a bait is being set here. But I think Dardoch might have gotten spotted rounding that corner. Golden Glue just has to burn all team kind of. That's about it. Probelt is going to play back and say, hey, enemy jungler's here. 
Other lands, do what you want. Yeah, and it looks like Golden Glue wants to back and push the wave out. But Cracks are going to go oh, aggressive. Both of them with a 1v2, but it's Smithy here just in case. Dardock is going to be the next target. Walks through the Miasma for a bit of extra poison. Poe Belter still going with oh. the EQ. Not quite enough. The last auto, not there. Dada forced to flush again, though. And that was Poe Belter pulling Xmithy towards him because they were trying to break a freeze and not let Poe Belter freeze the lane. And now he'll get another lane to shove out. Just another wave here and put Golden Glue on a worse back timer. It's these small optimizations that are showing just the difference between like a seventh place and first place team. I mean, we're getting out of the way of that at this point. Poe Belter is almost 30 CS ahead as Xmithy just takes the blue in front of Dada, who did have it warded. Yeah, and you could see where Olay positioned himself towards the tri brush during that time and let Cody Sun kind of just sit in the lane by himself. He did hit six, so he would have the buster shot and be okay. And Piglet didn't have six himself to try and go for a Fate's Call play. So just kind of taking a lot of things into consideration when they make these movements so that they can't be punished as heavily. Yeah, it looks like Poe Belts are going to keep moving forward on the mana items. Catalyst now finished. I assume Rod of Ages is going to be the build. I haven't seen a lot of different Cassio builds, but yeah. this seems to be the most staple one. I mean, when you are 25 CS up over your lane opponent, eight, nine minutes in, I mean, you can go for the scaling build, and you're just basically paying off exactly what happened in the early game. You're just kind of cashing in at that point. Rest of the lane's very safe here from Mortals also. Cody nice and even on CS despite all the early scuffling in the bot lane, and Flame had priority and is actually up 10 CS as well. Able to leverage his advantage in Shen versus Maokai. And even the bot lane advantage in terms of the Zyra versus the uh, double range bot lane. Like, Zyra should be the bully in most cases here. But because Piglet died early and the Zyra died early, Cody Suns actually stayed up in CS slightly. And when I talked about the draft, TL were kind of looking for an aggressive jungler in terms of playmaking ability, but then also having a top, or sorry, a mid and a bottom lane that are winning. And oh! now top lane, they're trying to make a Point play. Just get rooted off to the flash mat. There is the rest of the lane's road draft here. Flame is going to fall to Piglet. Nice play from TL. And this is the macro play they're trying to make. TL, we're hoping to make this play after something like the bottom turret go, uh, goes down. But because they have lane pressure bottom, they're able to rotate top, they get themselves a kill, and they'll get themselves first turret. And I don't think that Immortals are really too much in a position here just yet. Actually, that's a bluff by Xmithy. They weren't there just yet. Yep, they're both of absent from his lane is walking up the river. Yeah, and you can see how he's edging forward. He's actually not committing too hard just yet. You can see now the they're going to go. Cancels the back. It's 2v3 right now. Ole moving in, but flashes in to help Shen move forward. Full low, low. He's going to go down. No, Ole actually falls first. <laughs> and there's the taunt landing on. Pobelt's able to get that first kill. Matt goes down as well. A two for one there in the top lane. Oh, Dardock throws out the cask and it pushes Flame over to where Matt was. So, oh, it's actually going to be first turret here, possibly for Immortals. We'll see if TL is able to stop this. The stun with a cannon wave seems good, but Dardock actually getting a double knock up there. This Piglet is going to maybe get more aggressive. Doesn't have Matt to throw in there. Yeah. After dying in that last engage. And things will settle down ever so blue field. Oh, Golden Blue has gone on quite the adventure. He's hiding. Where he at? How oh. long can he hide for? Take the board down. Get up. I think All he's right. gonna stop. Yeah. He's missing too much CS to the turret. He's got to stay up. So no first turret for either team here. So Smithy kind of bluffed there with when he showed himself because Tristana was very far back in the lane and then actually doesn't get the interrupt there onto Callista, but doesn't matter. And then Flame comes through. Doesn't have to really rely on anything like Flash there and gets the help from Dardock to reposition towards map. Not expected at all from the TL support. It looks like they've actually kind of fully swapped these lanes now as well. And he's still struggling a little bit, but overall almost 1,500 gold ahead for Immortals. Yeah, they're in a really good position. Xmithy, 100% kill participation alongside Cody Sun. So far, it's just been these macro moves. TL tried to make one of their own right there. And it wasn't a hard enough commit to the turret to take it down. But at the same time, it wasn't really a hard enough commit to the fight either to get something back. So now we just have Australian lanes pastry. My favorite. Upside down. This Cody is just going to clear this out. Pick up Matt again, really hammering this turret. Almost got it in that last push in the first swap, but going to have to work a lot harder to take it now. Yep. Smithy is actually invading. He's spotted here. He's going towards where the blue buff is, but... And we'll see what happens. It's a little bit risky since teleports could be matched, and he's not going to do the same type of play. You can tell based on lane priority, they don't have priority top. They didn't really have too much mid. It was kind of like Pobelter was beginning to shove Golden Glue in. Uh, but because you don't have it top, you get collapsed on by a Zyra Callista. It basically makes it a play that completely backfires. 
And right now, TL kind of just need to play safe and just keep this pace right now where things aren't getting much worse. Get that turret eventually on the top side, but everything else is just, if you keep these these like 10 to 20 CS deficits and advantages for you across the board, you're in an okay spot. But I feel like they do need to accelerate the tempo eventually with their engage because Cassiopeia and Tristana will scale so much and they'll be able to shred these tanks. Well, a nice show of pressure there from Dardock in the top lane, able to make sure that turret falls. See if IMC can answer, because that gold is actually back to even now that Teal have gotten that extra gold from the first turret. By Belfo, he didn't even play aggressive Golden Blue with a hex drink. is a lot tankier than he would have been otherwise, but you can just see how dominant Pobelter is in this lane again. Dirty CS ahead, and that Rod of Ages is already finished and stacking up. Yeah, it does really hurt his damage, though, when he has the Hex Drinker. So Golden Glue not being able to kind of move towards a more aggressive build. This is a defensive don't die. And if you're losing your middle turret and taking, having taken a half HP, and that is really big, because the wave clear on this composition of TL is not very good. You're kind of relying on the Lucian. And that's where you're going to fall flat when you try to siege and um, try to close the game out if you have an, an advantage. But right now, Immortals had to Keep Cody Sun top, keep that wave kind of equalized so you can shove it back, like you were saying, get something back for Immortals. But they also make a play to get damage mid. So Immortals kind of control the top half of the map now. They'll get the top turret and just get this back. And now they can start focusing on the mid turret and try to get that. So it's a good setup for Immortals to move around the map. Yep, just great recognition of kind of where they've got tempo advantage. Yep. TL looking for a die. This is another great play, actually. Looking to counter here in the mid lane, Dardock threatening Poe Belter's 1v4, can't do anything right now. Yep. And you saw where Poe Belter was playing there, playing on the top side of the lane. Well played there so he doesn't get body slam flashed. No vision really of Dardock at that moment, but knew that he had vision of his own left side jungle and there's no way a play is being made there. So we're kind of taking things into consideration and just, I'm just putting these players under a microscope because we're ending like the season in a few weeks. So I'm really just kind of looking at, hey, what are these small optimizations these teams are making that put them at the top of the standings over others? Oh man, Zyra plans to some problems for the wave, but Kanamini is going to fall down. Ah. Cody with alone time on the turret, though, able to take that down. So not really an equal exchange, but TL doing well to keep the turrets even as the models do manage to get two in the top lane. Their play for mid was thwarted by Team Liquid, and now Piglet's back down here getting something going for his own team as he gets this bottom out of turret to about 60% health. Yeah, and Cody Sun with that push to the tier two top is actually crazy because it was a slow push back from him after TL took that top tier one turret, the first turret of the game, and they were able to just keep going and going and stop a play mid while simultaneously getting their own on the top side. And that's really just a great play for Immortals in terms of, hey, we're making sure that you can make your play, but not to the full extent that you want, as we're making our own. So it wasn't just a play to counter, it was one to make your own play at the same time, even when you're on the back foot in terms of tempo. I really like those types of plays. Yeah, it's a smart swap back now as well from Immortals. The Shen is back towards that top lane. There's a Drake up for grabs. It is the first one of the game. Mountain is available on Immortals again, knowing they've kind of got a bit more space than TL right now, kind of leaning on that small gold advantage they do have. Plane can come down at any moment. He's pushing the lanes out with a Tiamat, so Dragon is there. And if we are going to play some sort of a siege game uh -huh. here in the mid game, Immortals are going to be very happy with that break. Oh, yeah. Immortals right now, they're trying to pick off Cody Sun, but how many people? Oh, that's a lot, but the root is there. Knockup is going to land with a shield and the Lulu ult. He might keep him alive. Piglet forced to burn his own up. It's a 4v2 and TL now Kyle still fighting. Lola going to try and even those odds back up as Ole is going to fall the Piglet. Malkai are creeping towards the rest oh. of Immortals, but Xminti gets boosted away from by Tardock's ultimate after flashing past the cast. Immortals, though, are forced to back off here. TL going to try and answer with the turret. Great choice of words, Pastry. Gets pushed away there. It's a damage boost. <laughs> like a Metroid. <laughs> you guys ever seen the speed run? <laughs> oh. All right. No time to talk about that now. Turret's going down again. And now TL will have that turret advantage and gold advantage now after that play that they sat around in a bush to try and make, making sure one doesn't happen back to them there. Yeah. Not there from TL to kind of check all the boxes, but still going on the overall shove. Cody, though, should be able to defend this. The Trinity Edge was completed after taking that tier 2 turret in the top lane, so a good bit of gold as IMT. Try to force you, but TL do react well. Yeah, and this Callista for Piglet allows Piglet to kind of have no say over how much damage we're going to be doing, how much we're going to be re engaging. Just throw Matt in. Doesn't matter too much there, but it does get a little closer. Gets the Spears out, kills Olay. And then Xmithy with the flash there after Dardox, yep. Whoa. Yeah, TL, Maokai, like you said, Maokai pretty disgustingly powerful right now. And that ultimate 
able to keep a lot of people locked up and even stop the disengage completely for a bit. Yeah, but you can kind of see that top and bot lanes have evened out as far as overall farm goes. Flame is still up on Lolo, but Lolo with a nice team play should have got a decent amount of gold after the score lines are equalized. It really is just this mid lane where struggles are happening as Poe Belter continuing to bully Golden back and forth in this lane. He's 40 CS ahead and building in towards that next big item. Looks like Seraph is second there as well. IMT continuing that run of pressure, able to take down that bottom outer. Equalize those turrets once again, and you can see just how low the mid turret there is for TR. I don't think they can confidently say that they're going to hold on to that in these next few minutes. Still, and gold is even, so... Yeah, but the bottom push, the bottom push right now. That's the thing that you have to worry about, because this Tristana has a Mountain Drake, has a decent amount of damage to these turrets. And you also have a Jarvan here, who just... Walked through the bottom jungle and said there's nobody here. They're going to siege bottom turret and maybe trade Rift Herald for it, but at the same time, it's just a better play from Immortals. Yeah, kind of a tough one to set up as well. Rift Herald very late into this game. Going to be secured easily by Dragos and Callisto. We'll see if Seattle can actually get a start out of it. They've got four minutes now to try and make something happen. IMC continue to shove down this bot side, and that turret is very low. I feel like there's two turrets right now that possibly go down. If you try to get, try to defend both, you might lose both. So Pobelt are threatening mid, whereas simultaneously bottom the Tristana as well as the Lulu will threaten that one. And now you play between both and only put as many people as you need to get it. Pobelt there. Oh, oh gets back hot. In, but yeah, Dada can't follow up. It's going to be there to make sure everything was A-OK. -okay. And IMC had already backed off to that bot side. So my friend's here to rotate back up, maybe try and get a pick off with that turret falling, but I'll hold on to it for now. As it looks like Cody gonna go back and that's most of his first Energizer item now completed. That shard and the zeal now complete, now done. Yeah, and Knight's foul for Smithy, just full full protection here for him. Good guy, Smithy. Yeah. Always there for his team. I mean, he's 3-0 and 1, and he, I feel like I, I personally, as a tank player, uh, am still a very selfish tank player. So when I look at Smithy, who's uh, very active early, pretty much gives everything to his teammates, including the gold he gets very early on. Like building a Knight's Vow here, a lot of people would say, all right, let's go for something else, you know, something that's a little more selfish. Uh, Black Cleaver, you know, even just building more towards damage, um, or even a selfish tank item, right? But Smithy just really has the game, the big picture in mind most of the time. And that's something that I think even Olay talked about in one of his interviews. So let's roll on. Catch on the Cody. Interrupt there. Gonna find him. Forced to flash away. Lulu also and also expended, but Tia with no further follow up. Cody definitely has kind of a lot of get out of jail free cards yeah. here, but has to make sure not to get trapped. I had to make sure that if you're putting you know, a lot of eggs in that basket, that the basket, basket is, you know, completely locked down. Make sure nobody can get in that basket. Just make sure Cody's son can't get caught. Well, okay for now, but again, still kind of scaling up. Piglot on the other side does have two items already finished, so. He is team fight ready at this stage on Kalista. Does feel like still the advantages despite the gold lead being quite even are there for Immortals. I mean, Poe Belter in oh, any yeah. lane right now is pretty much capable of a 1v1. Yeah, he's He'll 40 CS. Gets stronger as that goes on. Yeah, 40 CS up, 10 CS a minute. He's doing really well for himself on this Cassiopeia. And we talked about scaling. I feel like at this point you just talked about, hey, you know, they've done it incredibly well for this mid lane Cassiopeia. We're past that point where you can kind of get to her early and shut her down. It's like, no, she's tanky now because she has the Rod of Ages. It's stacked up. She's got some Dark Seal stacks. And she's already working towards her third item, whereas Golden Glue has like one and a half, not even boots two just yet. Uh, he's very far ahead. TL again, moving Piglet mid lane. Gonna get these lanes shoving out. Golden Glue kind of left with the scraps in top lane. Oh, but looking at the gold overall, Piglet actually has the most gold in the entire game right now. He's a thousand up. Hasn't spent it yet though, over Pobelter. So Piglet, once again, this is, you know, Piggy's getting fed. Make sure that he can actually carry a game. This Callisto will have a difficult time getting in, but once he gets in, he's going to try to skirt these fights. It'll be hard. We've seen Piglet have those games where he does have a lot of the kills, and then it's very hard for TL to convert. Oh, trying to chase down Piglet. Actually going to commit with the Shen ultimate as well. Going to jump in, flash off the ultimate, and actually got interrupted there for Flame, I assume. Yeah. So now it's a 2v2, and Piglet's the big one here. Ultimate expended onto Xmithy, but Dardoch nails the cast this time around. 
Cody Sunless finally oh, rolled down. What? This fight's gone on a long time. Is that Dove and you didn't quite connect? Lolo trying to get in there. Does root up a committee and commit that ultimate. Gonna look to chase down Cody, but he dodges the rest of the Bramble. And Matt Matt for the knockup. It's the buff shot committed, but a root. He's gonna follow into the strangle dodge. Cody Sun knocked up and killed by Piglet as he rends it out. And now Pobelta left out to dry Baron. Cody down. They're gonna rip Terrell here. They might be able to Baron afterwards and TL catching Immortals off guard. Nice play there from TL again. Reacting very nicely to the aggression there from Mortals. Man. Baron certainly on the table. I was talking about Piglet. This is one of those games that Basket for them is also secure. Piglet, six kills. They put a lot of eggs in there already. All right, Ole. Level one Q. Nope, no, no. You're try. Oh, come on. The Spirit of Blood Water will not be remembered today. Instead, it's Team Liquid able to secure that Baron. That was 8 HP. Could have done it. <laughs> Still, TL though. 2,000 gold advantage, have the Baron now. And this was Xmithy as well as Ole and Flame being incredibly aggressive, but Morlo has his bros there, interrupts it. Xmithy, this EQ to try and get back in onto Piglet, the one that misses here because he's polymorphed, he won't be able to get out of the way, doesn't even connect and pull him forward, which would have pushed the battle line back, but it doesn't matter too much because the Maokai was entering anyway. And then I love how Matt gets in there, Piglet throws him in, and they're able to take out both of the carries on Immortals, leaving just the support in the top laner. Instant flash forward there for Piglet as well, just making sure he ended with that triple kill. See just how much damage Piglet was able to dish out in that last fight, and it was not a very fair one. Pope Elsa tried valiantly. <laughs> But like you can see how long Piglet was actually wailing on Xmithy there and how long it took him in kind of like a two-on-one or two-on-two to get to that damage number, whereas Pobelter entered the fight and so did Cody Sun near the end, got CC'd for a large portion of it, and they still did that much damage each. You have to keep them locked down. You have to start snowballing this game with this Baron buff that you have on TL's side. Or else it doesn't get too much better than this point. Well, Padre over the Team Liquid, only two so far taken in this game. But TL going to equalize that objective. Still with the Baron buff for a little while, so we'll see if TL can continue extending this lead or if it's kind of kind of flattened here at 2,500 gold. It looks like Seed started mid, and that's how it's low, so pretty likely contender. You also have a Maokai ultimate. If you want to use it to push people off of turrets or even start a fight, you can. Uh, right now, it's just kind of going between two turrets. They want to be able to push mid with the Maokai, push bottom with the Lucian, and go back and forth between them depending on what damage they can get at what time. Hold up, they're going to return damage on the Golden Glue as Morlo pushes up mid, and he'll have that turret take a decent amount of damage here. Smithy is there. He's their primary engage aside from the Shen, so you don't have to worry about anybody on the bottom side getting picked off here. That's and they're looking right at Cody. Tealer Cody again going to get caught out here, but everyone's oh. defended, but not enough to protect him. Piglet now dominating, gets yet another kill. Picked over the wall, Cody's son. Talk about his consistency. The eggs are cracked, man. They got in there. All over the rift, starting to bake. Omelette incoming. Ooh. So if you're hungry, that's good news. But TL, happy to feast here. They're going to break into that mid lane, take down the turret, and this inhibitor should fall with it. And TL using that Baron buff, just keeping the pressure on. We've seen TL get thousands of gold advantages. We've seen them at 10,000 gold advantages. The game is never over till it's over for them, but this is a very hopeful start for them. Certainly is, looking good. So they get almost max, pretty much maximum value, really, out of that Baron. Breaking the base is kind of a gold standard yeah. to the first Baron, and that's exactly what they achieved. Immortal's going to have to play very well to so maneuver their way back to an even game state. And again, they've got good tools to do it. They've got great late game team fighting. Cody is working towards item number three, and Poe Belter shouldn't be far away from his, but Lolo's getting tanky. Even Golden Blue's starting to pick up those items, and again, it's, it's Piglet with all the strength. Exactly. Piglet is 7-1-0. and zero. He's the one who has most of the gold on the team. If you can get to Piglet and kill him, then you can pretty much play the team fights out from there. But also, Flame at the same time hasn't really prioritized too much in terms of defensive stats just yet. Now he's gone towards the Thorn Mail. He's almost there, but he's got pieces of two different items as well as the Titanic, which was completed as his first item to help him split push. But that's not how this game has gone. It has not been about the split push with the current pressure on the side lane. It's been more about protecting your carries, who had a good start to the game, but now you're seeing it way more in favor of TL right now in terms of the Callista is definitely off the ground. Well, Baron Buff is about to shake off, so we'll see if TL can, with their now Baronless team, continue to extend that lead. Golden Glue hunting off to the side, but he's going to rotate down. It looks like Liquid is set up here 
in the bottom half of the map. Remember, Poe Belter is on super minion killing duty right now, so it's going to be tough for him to get in the mix. Tail know that they're happy to threaten just one lane at the moment, actually. Quite see where Lolo is guiding the minions into mid. Yeah, it's interesting that he doesn't even elect to go top right now. Says there's more pressure with the Maokai being flanking. He's walking in from behind. He has the ulti. He's trying to push him off. And this is just more pressure than if he was on the top side of the map now. So he's going to help push these minion waves in and threaten a side flank. And I love this from Lorlo because it gives them space for the rest of the team to possibly walk up. He will eventually have to back and try to deal with Flame, or they make a play and pull Flame up here via TP, via whatever they can. There's Maokai ulti, yep. looking for something. Forcing him away, Smithy may have sacrificed himself as the ulti up from Matt, gonna look to knock him up, does connect as Lolo gets the root back in, and nice ult from Dardok to knock him back in, and Piglet going godlike. And Dardok, I mean, he's wanted a piece of it. Smithy all split long. You saw the 0-3 in terms of the game score. This might be his first one of the split, getting revenge for last week. Well, TL still pressuring. Big wave built up from Mortals, but they've got other problems right now. As TL look to use their mana advantage for that 20 extra seconds and try and knock down this turret flame. Taking heat there. TL not quite able to get on top of it. Kalista isn't the best siege champion. Cody's able to wave clear pretty effectively with the help of Cobalta, so they'll keep their turrets alive for now and TL will retreat. Yeah, but a minute and 15 seconds on that Baron, they can reset, take the jungle, go to the top side of the map and start playing around that. Because there's a tier two that you can get on the top uh, that TL are looking at. And Piglet will try to slow push this wave out as they simultaneously get control of the mid and the top side jungle where Baron is. Yeah, that's kind of where they want to be anyway, so it should be some pretty straightforward assignments here for TL. IMT again still dealing with the super minions in their mid lane, so Ole and Pobel are going to team up for that task. I do like the Piglet now with mm. three items. That's even more complete. It kind of knows that Pobelta yeah. is the big threat in these team fights. Although Cody now with three items finished, mm -hmm. can look to take down that Kalista as well if he can safely get in range. Yeah, Piglet's got you know, level 15. He's doing really well for himself in terms of gold. Eight, one, and zero. He only had one kill kind of taken away from him by Matt. And just, uh, one of those first early ones. But I, I definitely feel like a... Uh oh, hold on. I definitely feel like the Bramble Vest from Flame is going to be pretty big here in terms of shutting down Piglet. They're looking for a flank. There's oh, Ooh, flash on, on. on the Golden Glue. Might be a kill, but all of the expended. Cobalt looks for the flash on. Doesn't quite connect it. Stranglethorns again. Gets a good knocker, but it's Smithy actually in the back line. He's going to try and dive into the, the carries. Cody finally arrives to the fight of Matt. Goes down to Pobalt. The Lola with a very long flank, but it may be too late. Piglet just can't get in right now as Dardak finally snares him up. Lola is able to find it. Oh. Cody just too far forward. Goes down to Golden Glue. Now IMT on full retreat. This TL looking to clean up some stragglers. Immortals will get away. Yep, trading your AD carry for the support. Not worth for Immortals, but that'll mean TL. They get complete control of this area like before, and they'll start this up. They have the Callista, they have their jungler. Nick Smithy, is he going to try to steal this? Is he going to try to save another game? Looks like the answer is yes, based on that positioning. Going to take the honey for it now. TL know where he is. Oh, oh they're trying again. To Flame again, looking for another taunt. Pobelta needs to be protected, but Golden Glue goes down. Ole! Piglet! Able to get that kill as Piglet's trying to fight off X Smithy. Flame, also in the front side is Pobelta. He's found Dardock front line. He's evaporating there. It's there. On to Piglet. He goes down. Pobelta grabbing the shutdown of Mortals. They have found a way to turn the game all the way back around. Triple kill for Pobelter. He was the one carry who was left up. And now Immortals back in it. More than enough for that team fight. As Matt, he's back to try and steal the Baron, but he's got no yep. chance. We're back to even here. Baron apiece for the teams back. In terms of the total, man, this is just this is just insane. So they approach, Flame has the TP flank. Poe Belter has the approach from the side. They get Golden Glue here. Flame actually just walks up, taunts through as he wants to go aggressive. And then they pick up Golden Glue with just Olay's damage on top of flames, and then Xmithy's keeping Piglet occupied, but they're slowly shredding everybody else around, and Piglet just doesn't have enough damage there. The Callista is not that tank shredder. She's not that champion that's going to stack that crit. It takes a lot of time for her to really get those spears in, and the Bramble Vest is something that's going to shut her down. Even if you get the Ma HP back, if you get the HP from the Blade of the Ruined King, it's still gonna get cut, and even if you're attacking somebody else, 
The Runance Hurricane Bolts are going to apply the Thorn Mail to you. So you will apply that Grievous Wounds, and you won't be getting as much as you want. And look at that. You can just see the damage. Warlow did more than Piglet. I mean, on the contrary, you know, he is really good at turning tanks. Four items. Castle Castle yeah. yeah, and Pobelsa demonstrating that there. Five kills now, so many items, and over 6,000 damage in a team fight. It takes some big health bars to do that much damage, but Pobelsa was able to chew through the entire TL front line, and eventually, Little Piglet. Yeah, and he's going to have movement speed increases from the Whimsy. He's going to have the shield as well. So there's a lot of great things going for Pobelter in this game. He has defensive stats. He has also the uh, shields to help back him up. And now he's looking at five kills, almost a flame horizon here for him over Golden Glue. And he was the highest level in the game for a moment there before flame caught up. And still two item slots to go. Yeah. Wonderful. No boots. What's he doing? Fast enough, it seems. <laughs> ZMT kind of getting that Baron Empowered push going. Cody guiding those minions into that mid lane. Flame playing the long game there on top, but that's a big wave coming. For that turret as IMT, take the tier two in mid. There's only inhibitor turrets to take right now. And you can see the six Mithy just sitting on a ward. They kind of give away that he's on a ward though, and then they sweep it and pick it up. Well, but right now, Flame pushing top, Cody pushing mid, rotating between all of the lanes, and they're just kind of milking this Baron buff in every lane. Got more than enough time as Flame is finally onto a turret, so TL have to instantly respond. Lolo, does he care he's though? He's trying very hard, and he's not doing very much. Flame. Respect until enough to back away with everyone else missing, but he's gonna be right back to business as Lolo. It's gonna take so long to clear up Baron Empowered Minions. Mm -hmm. And this team doesn't have Baron Empowered Minion Wave Clear. Like we talked about how it's physical damage heavy. Physical damage is not as effective against super minions. Super minions have the negative magic resistance, so you you usually want a big mage with wave clear to deal with them. But that aside, even just the fact that these are just Baron Empowered and not even super minions. Their wave clear is low in the first place. It's the Lucian calling, it's a little bit mat, maybe a barrel, but it's not like a victor. It's not like anything from a static shift Tristana, even. And Cody with all this protection, again, Lulu ulti, Shen ulti, and also Poe Belter just kind of sit behind and let defend you with his ultimate as well. IMT just happy to play it slow, though. No, they'll crack at least one turret with the way this game is going. And they still have 40 seconds left on this Baron. He'll have to make a play pretty soon here as Cody getting aggressive for the turret. He will claim it. And now IMT can just move in. Trying to take that down these inhibs. I mean, what is Teal really going to do here? The 5v5 is not something they want to opt into versus the Baron up IMT that have such good carries. Yeah, and they even, I can just think, speaking of itemization on this patch, Lorlo going for the Sunfire Cape. I don't particularly like it. See if it helps him here. Huh? Trapped again in the Miasma. Turret goes down, ultimate out. Not gonna try and get the strangle zones happening. Pobelta soaks that damage with the shield as flame. Blast away, but oh, oh, oh. eats every other bit of damage. Cody firing back, trying to life shield back up as soon as possible. Flame can even TP back into this fight if it back doesn't get cancelled. Data doing making sure that happens. And it does seem like Immortals will only get one inhibitor, but top is open if they need it. Gonna retreat for now though. Not overextending. You can see the turnaround that happened in this game. That was about as much damage as Pobelta did in that Baron Tank <laughs> fight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, a lot of sixes in this game right now. Immortals, gold, TL also. But yes, it's been that magic number so so far. Who's gonna do 6,000 in the next? I but, just want Pobelta to do the meme amount of damage. Yeah, the meme amount. It, but on a serious note here, the, the Lorlo Sunfire Cape, I'm not so much a huge fan of the Sunfire Cape. Uh, it got changed a little bit. It's now Bomby Cinder, a Ruby Crystal, and a Chain Vest. So the build path kind of says, okay, build it first. That's fine. But I'm more a fan of things like Righteous Glory to help you engage. We're seeing so many Maokais in the top lane go for a Doran's Ring, Doran's Shield, and have the, that to kind of lean on for early HP and then go for the Righteous Glory, which gives you all these stats that you really want as Maokai, and then building towards Spirit Visage. Because Righteous Glory here would give you a lot of options to flank, be respected when you walk forward, because now it's just this Maokai that has no surprise factor to it. You'll see everything he does coming, uh, instead of kind of having to respect the Righteous Glory range. And we've seen that Lola just can't really soak that much damage at the point that IMT's carries are right. They have to catch them, but for both of the Banshee's gonna make that even harder as they push in again, but TL, Able to repel that. IMT trying to line it up with Flame, who's sitting in butt. Yeah, and we're talking about Pobelter's items here, where he has that Banshee's Veil. He also has a Knight's Vow from Flame on him now. So it's double Knight's Vow 
four Immortals to keep their carry safe to make sure nothing happens. It's actually like Smithy who put his on Poe Belter, and Cody Suns, I believe, has not been applied yet for Flame. Yeah, so Flame do it when he ends. A touch out of range. <laughs> Currently pushing in the vault lane, but can make that pretty quickly as the ulti's down. And again, just kind of threatening, pushing minions into this turret, and forcing Lolo to just hang out. I mean, that's really the, the best way Teal can get a fight going as well, so... Lolo not being there or being there late, having a TP or walk over does also kind of cost Team Liquid when trying to start some sort of team fight to keep themselves in this game. And Flame is just straight up ignoring Lolo at this point. Yeah, doesn't care about it at all. Get whatever pressure you can because Elder Dragon's coming up. Baron's up at 25 seconds. Giving your team room, pulling two people to deal with you. Exactly what you need in terms of the space that your team gets. I see, I thought might even have gone them, but instead gonna play back and force them out to an objective. Looks like Elder. That's off on the side that Flame was on. An Elder Dragon Steel also doesn't really get TL too much back in the game, to be completely honest. A Baron would be more catastrophic, so just bait the area, push bottom lane simultaneously. Don't care too much about the Baron, let your super minion waves on mid and top both work for you. And I feel like Team Liquid are in a very difficult situation. Yeah, there's a big lack of vision in Patel as they move through their own jungle, but they know they have to try but, something here. But what's gonna happen is Immortals aren't actually gonna act bite. Xmithy has a slight flank position. Flame is gonna continue to push. Now TL are on a timer. That will might panic them to do something, and that's exactly what's happening here. They're saying we have to oh, pull no. Flame to us. Smithy's over the wall. They've been funneled into the trap. TL fighting the Drake because they don't really know what else to do. Flames is going to take the rest of the units as Matt flashes forward by Toy Bosa, but he flashes out of the way. Stands out and moves in. Cody with a great butt struck. Keeps Piggle off of Mystic Smithy. Finally dives and Stoneblades back into the pit. Toy Belter ulti does miss Lola as he W's under, but Matt is so low. It's TL. I just don't think they have the damage. Lola finally going to fall. Smithy does get it. Smithy's trying to fight as best he can. Oh, the shot. Cody's going up. Cody jumps in, gets the shutdown, and they're going to look for the resets. There's one. There's the double. Yes. Make it three as the next kill falls down. And Golden Glue. He's the only one left alive for Liquid, but it's not gonna matter. Yep, Vault Boy can't hold this one down. It's gonna be IMT winning the first one. Apocalypse has arrived. Flame just gonna guide the minions in and finish what he started. Golden Glue gonna try and get another kill, but Cody's gonna seal that one shot. Looking for the close that Vault. Not gonna happen here, but the turrets fall down. Cody gonna threaten, and Golden Glue can only watch as the Nexus Crushes down into rubble. IMT gonna try and finish the ace, but not necessary. Instead, that'll happily take game one. All business there from the mid laner of Immortals. Ball Belter, stoic as ever, 6 1 and 3, and had a really good performance on that Cassiopeia. The laning phase, even from the level 2, where he played it into the Lucian. That was an incredibly solid performance there for the mid laner. There were some, there were some flubs there across the board for Immortals. But the way they got back into the game was off of TL being really aggressive onto a Baron call. They played it well to kind of counter it, but ultimately that as a number one team, you don't want to be in that situation. You want to have control from the get-go. So Immortals, you know, they'll be happy with the win, but I don't think they're going to be elated. No, I mean, I don't think so either. I mean, maybe not the cleanest game, but still a very impressive call to actually get to that point in the first place. But we're going to throw it over to Dash and Mark to see what they make of that comeback from Immortals. Thank you very much, Pastry. I'm surprised to have to say that it was a comeback yeah. from Immortals. Let me just start there again. We had a lot of questions coming into today about how Dardock would, you know, move back into his old organization of Team Liquid and go up once again against Six Smithy in the jungle. Actually, the third time they've had to meet this season. It shouldn't be possible. As they were the subject of the trades at the beginning, the most talked about trade at the beginning of the split. I love how things come full circle. Let's take a look at Champions Select, though, because, Mark, I know you have some strong opinions on the way that Immortals has most recently been drafting. Ole, great playmaking uh, support. One of the best in the league, arguably. What better champion for him to end up on than Lulu? I don't understand that. There were a lot of playmaking support bans, uh, and yes. I get that you, you know, with the Bard, the Blitz, and the Thresh all taken out, some of his signature champions, you know, he can play a Braum, some other stuff like that. Morgana we've seen him play before, but by taking the Lulu blind early, it's a little bit of a pick away from Matt, something he mm -hmm. has played, but it doesn't play to his strengths at all, and I'd rather have seen them take it a little bit slower. If he takes the Zyra, you can take the Lulu later, potentially. Um, either 
either way, I mean, uh, that was one of the big problems, I think, as well as the fact that if you just look at Immortals since 714, their drafts have not indicated a, a good understanding of the meta, where they, they did not take Callista early on, they took the Trist instead, which Piglet can play either one just fine, so it's not a big takeaway. You right. do secure a better late game, but then you're giving up the early game, and then no, no super tanks, none of, none of this, the standard tank picks. That's the thing that screams at me, just only because Xmithy is the Sejuani Gragas guy, right? So yep. I feel like this is the meta in which he'd thrive. Now, again, they still come away with a victory, and he did have some intelligent jungle play early on in the game to get some advantages. Before we get to the gameplay, though, we did hear from Piglet on what he thought this series would come down to. Take a look. I mean, I think this directly illustrates your yeah. point. Even even Team Liquid themselves have identified that Ole is one of the most important members to Immortal success. And so again, why is he ending up on a champion like Lulu, uh, recognizing that there are some, you know, the fair amount of support bands? Why is he on a champion that doesn't allow him to be as impactful as he might want to be across the entire map? not just the isolation of his own. Right, and, and not only that, in terms of, you know, Lulu itself isn't a, a strong champion uh, in terms of making plays, it also doesn't really win this lane matchup that easily. So uh, if you want to get on the map, the first thing you need to do is find times that you can do that. With Kalista taken away and the Zyra, it's, it's really hard as a Lulu to go actually influence another lane. It's also hard to influence other lanes when all of the action is happening around your lane itself. And that's where I think, again, uh, you know, Piglet got super fed in this game. We take a look at some of those kills. It was because they were forcing action down here. If we're going to be at your turret all game, then your jungler is going to have to respond, and you can't leave. Yep, and you see Piglet very intelligently realizes his uh, back is cut off, can't kite that one out, so he kites in, goes for the trade kill, picks up a kill there. TL keeps forcing down around bot side. They have another play up on the, the top, and then uh, a lot of these were punished by Smithy, who was matching this attention very well, and for the most part, they were having a lot of kills in, in this game, but they kept playing around Piglet early on. He kept finding kills. And at one point, even though TL was down a little bit, Piglet himself was 3-1. and one. Right, moving to 7-1 and one at one point, finishing the game with eight kills, a few deaths. It, it wasn't enough, right? And so while we watch the remainder of these kills come through for Piglet, I think the important thing for us to identify next is why was it that Team Li Liquid couldn't propel themselves to victory with such a fed AD carry? That's, that's the, the kind of scary thing here, because you see how difficult this fight is for Immortals. Like, Ole is no longer another engaged tool. Smithy tried his best, but they, they got kind of interrupted, did not get the first and gauge off and from there on Piglet left w to run wild through this fight and it's one of those situations where if Ole had a playmaking champion could he have impacted these fights uh, probably quite and, possibly yeah and honestly this is a disaster at this point you just got three for road TL grab Baron off that and right after that play they run up mid and, and that's where we get to your point about you know could they have well, why did they lose the game and it just came down to a, a mistake in shot calling where they they did kill Cody some but he wasn't a large threat and they really kind of got outplayed in one small skirmish that let Pobel to run wild in the fight. Let's take a look at it. We're heading to the Baron Pit where most of throws happen in League of Legends. Oh, but boy. here we have Team Liquid. Hey, they've got that advantage. They're looking to start the objective, objective rather, in a 4v4 at the moment. But Immortals is going to outplay this one. Take a look at Pobel for the work he does in this fight. And the big thing there was Flame got a taunt right onto Golden Glue as he tried to dash in and get follow-up on Dardoch's body slam. I'm not sure they would have had enough damage to chew through uh, the Cassiopeia anyways, because they didn't have the Gragas displacement ult because I was using the previous fight. Either way, that lets Pobelter turn and just melt targets down one at a time. They also get a, a really nice CC onto Piglet, who was the big fed member on Team Liquid. And as soon as they're able to finish him off, it's too easy to win the rest of that fight. And, and again, if you take a fight near the Baron pit, the team that loses, or the team that wins rather, gets to turn directly onto that Baron. With the Cassiopeia, you can melt that one down. Look at that damage, 33K coming out of Pobelter in the mid lane as compared to 11K out of Golden Glue. So that's really where the majority of the damage swing is because the 80 carries are neck and neck. Right, and it was the whole game as well. Really early on, level one, level two, you saw Pobelts are willing to go for those all-ins, almost getting the kills. Smithy would come sometimes, multiple people roaming to the mid lane trying to influence that one, but Pobelter put up a very staunch defense the entire time because Lucian is obviously taken to stomp lane, did not happen, and then come late game, the Cassiopeia is going to do way, way more. Naturally, the Cassiopeia and Poe Belter will be taking player of the game for this one. Again, being that damage source, they need to push themselves back into this game. But moving into game two, what's your mental state on, on either side of the rift here? As immortals, I got to be concerned that we were that this was even a game. Yeah. Again, we're the first place team up against one of the last place teams in that, you know, we've got that tie for seventh. 
and it's this close a game, I'm worried. That's the scary thing, just because they didn't look good last week uh, in particular either. Really tough series versus FlyQuest, I believe right, it was. Right, scraped through them. Yeah, and, and here, once again, just a really scrappy first game that uh, against a better team, this is a loss most likely. Uh, if you're looking at the other top of the table teams, if you fall 4,000 gold behind and give up a mid inhibitor, they're probably going to keep snowballing that game. And for Liquid, it's heads up, right? I mean, look, uh, yeah, you see, there's going to be a sting. There's going to be a sting to have taken the loss when you had the ability, right, when you had the tools to win. But again, in the context of the series, an expected loss against the number one team, hey, we pushed them to their limits here. If we change a couple things, we might actually come away with Ws. I would agree for the most part if it wasn't for the fact that this was Team Liquid who had a million people added to the roster, most notably Dardock recently. And uh, it's not the typical team where, you know, you're the fourth place team and you lost a game to the one place team. You're like, right. oh, well, it was close. Maybe we, we, we tweak some things. You're looking at, and I'm, I'm not sure the mental state of this team coming into the series. Matt was it, talking. It didn't start up here. It's yeah. already down here. Right. You heard Matt talking about, like, the never giving up mentality, but it, it wasn't said with much gusto behind it. It wasn't like, we're going to do it, guys. It was, <laughs> it was, it was a very uh, low-key statement. So I, I think... If you're looking at what CL's mental state, it, it's very hard to judge what's going to change from game to game because I'm not sure where it's at at the start of the day. Well, they put up a good fight. When we come back, we'll see if Team Liquid can even up the series in game two versus Immortals. Don't touch that browser.